thing. Well, today, Mom, we are visiting with David Solomon, and mm -hmm. he's extremely interesting. I got to read his bio about what he's been doing with his life. He was born in Tel Aviv, Israel, yes. then moved to New York, finally made it to Dallas, and he is now publishing a book that's coming out in the fall called Penguinpedia, where he basically spent time two summers in Antarctica following penguins. And so today he's going to tell us about his experiences and how he's created this book that's coming out. Welcome, David. Thank you for having me. Very so glad, glad to, to have, have you. you. I love this topic. Yes. Um, it's so interesting to me. And when I saw it on the schedule, I was very happy to have you here. So tell us first thing. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't know that much about birds and about penguins. So tell us what is a penguin? Is it a bird? Penguin is a bird. And it's a strange kind of a bird because it doesn't fly. It eats by diving. It does a lot of things that other birds don't do. Mm -hmm. There are also other birds that do what penguins do, but they don't do it with the intensity and the abilities that a penguin has. So a penguin has feathers. Mm -hmm. We don't see them, but yeah. it has a body full of feathers from head to toe. Actually, three times the amount of feathers that a regular bird has. Oh, wow. Wow. It migrates. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do it by flying, of course, because it doesn't fly. It does it by swimming and diving. It could migrate two, two and a half thousand miles away from its nest and come back again to the same spot to nest the next year at the exact same nest. Mm. Oh, how do they amazing. remember where yeah. to go? I mean, how do these animals, from your studying them, they, they go 2,000 miles away and then come back to the exact same place? Okay, the, there is a lot that's known about penguin and it's mostly what they're doing above ground when they're outside on land. Mm -hmm. They stand, they're right there like an open book. If you sit next to them, they be there for weeks at a time, moving very short distances. They don't fly away, they are pretty friendly to people, so it's very easy to study them on land. Once they get into the water, what they do is by and large a mystery. Uh -huh. We don't really know much what they do underwater. There are studies now that are being done with GPSs and other equipment. There is just recently, in the last year or two, video cameras, that underwater video cameras that people attach to them and they start learning and opening what they do underwater. Mm -hmm. So they have amazing capabilities that we don't know what exactly they are, but they have a way to go away 2,000 miles, come back, get out at exactly the same spot that they got into the water, walk whatever distance it requires, and get right into the same nest and fight for that nest if somebody else is there. Oh, my well, goodness. Okay, how long, let's go back, how long have pink, pinkins really been around? Penguins have been around from just about the time that dinosaurs disappeared. Mm -hmm. So the dinosaur disappeared around 135 million years ago, that's when penguins start being evolved. The actual finds of penguins, we have what we call the zero, the zero penguin, which is not exactly like the penguin we have today, but it's the basal penguin. That's from 70 to 80 million years ago. Oh. 40 million years ago, we have a penguin that is almost the penguin that we have today. And one of the species, the exact species that exists today is 17 million years old. Oh my goodness, wow. Well, you've talked a little bit about their bodies, mm -hmm. about they don't fly, mm -hmm. but tell us a little bit more about their, um, their bodies and their capabilities. Mm -hmm. Penguin is an amazing animal, and one of the reasons that I got so interested in them is once I started reading, I couldn't believe what I found. So we have an emperor penguin that fasts for 110 to 120 days, doesn't eat anything, mm -hmm. sits in the mm -hmm. middle of the winter in Antarctica, where the temperature could be as minus 70 degrees, mm. winds of 100 miles per hour or more, and he's doing all that while he's sitting on an egg and need to watch, if, if, if you know what an egg, a small egg that the chicken has, he has an egg probably 10 times the size of a chicken and he has to make sure he doesn't break it. It sits on his leg. He still have enough strength to walk back 60 miles on ice toward the ocean get into the water, dive for whatever time it takes to get his food, which is 14 or 15 days, but his diving capabilities, for example, he can dive to 1,800 feet, mm. he can dive for 21 minutes on one breath of air, and this thing doesn't end. Now, every penguin is not like the emperor, which is the largest and, have the, and has the most capabilities, 
but they do go and impress you when you start studying the bodies. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about the, the nest and the egg. The men are the ones that sit so, on the egg, correct? The, ba the male okay, penguins, the, the men, the male there penguins. There are 17 different species mm -hmm. of penguins. They, they all have eggs because they're all birds, mm -hmm. and they do it in different ways. Mm -hmm. So in the case of the emperor, the female lay the egg, lays the egg, mm -hmm. she transfers it, which is very complicated process, wow. For the, for the egg not to touch the ice, if it touches the ice, it stales. Mm -hmm. So they transfer the egg, the, the male takes the egg, mm -hmm. sits on it for about 110 days. Ah. The female at that time, she stays for a while, but then she leaves, she goes swimming to get her energy back together to eat, mm -hmm. because once they're on land, there's no food for them. Oh my goodness. Their food is fish, krill, mm -hmm. and squid, mm -hmm. which is in the water mm -hmm. and deep in the water. So once they're on land, they cannot eat. They have to go back to the water. In the case of the emperor, the female comes back after the egg hatches. So it means that there is already a chick when she comes back. So the emperor, the male does all the brooding duties. He does, <laughs> he sits on the egg for the entire hundred and something days that it requires. Most other species, they split the thing. Split. The, the average uh, incubation period for a penguin outside the, the big ones, the king and the emperor, is around 30 to 40 days. Mm -hmm. And they usually split it either two ways or three ways. Mm. What, what do they, since they have this life on land and the life at sea, how do they really um, alternate between the two lives and what kind of problems do they face? A penguin has to be an animal that has two modes. He has one set of rules and one set of physics and biology to stay in the water and the other one is to stay on land. Mm -hmm. What he has for the water hardly is usable for what he stays on land. So underwater he has a whole system of oxygen storing that it's amazing. He, his body carries triple or quadruple the amount of oxygen per uh, pound of body mm -hmm. than we do, for example. Mm. He uses his oxygen in, in a very precise manner. And the most interesting part is that when everything ends and his body is into such low levels of oxygen where our body will start malfunctioning and will we'll, we'll suffer poisoning and, and probably perish, the penguin keeps on going for another minute or so, like as if he has some unknown energy <laughs> oh that goodness. comes from nobody knows where. Mm. When they come to land, they have to protect themselves mostly against the cold or hot temperature. Believe it or not, there are penguins that live on the equator. Mm. There are penguins that live in temperature of 100 degrees. Mm -hmm. So they use the same mechanism more or less to protect them against cold and against the heat. In the water, the water by nature cannot go below 32 degrees, but once they step on land, there is a very large difference in temperature, yeah. and sometimes they live in very, very cold environment. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. When they, uh, isn't it true, though, when they do split and they're away, they always come back to the same mate, isn't that correct? Or is that what I, that was in the movie. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, 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 there are 17 species, mm -hmm. and several, two or three, are not v very loyal. Okay. <laughs> so they, they will change okay. for the most part. Uh -huh. Only by chance they will go back to the mate for land. The other 15 or so species, they are loyal. The yes. divorce rate is maybe 10, 15 percent. Mm -hmm. But the interesting, the, the whole relationship between the male and the female is an extremely interesting relationship mm -hmm. because they would, the male is, is the one that goes along with what the female arranges for him. So females will fight over males at times, especially the female from last year will fight for a mate mm -hmm. from the year before. And the male sometimes, a young female will come, one that didn't breed the year before and doesn't have a male, will come early oh, and attach herself mm -hmm. to him. When the new, when the old female comes in, she will get into a huge fight, she will evict the other <laughs> female oh, and no. take and the male is just standing there watching all this happening and going along with whatever final decision is being taken by the stronger female 
More interesting is that maybe a day passed and that female that just fought for a hobby might go and cheat on him. Oh my and goodness. she comes back to the nest as if ah. nothing happened. Oh. Ah. And then you have some researcher looking and no one ever found the chick from an expert relationship. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Oh. Well, you know what? Penguins are not that much different than yeah. us, it seems like. <laughs> Well, this is fascinating, oh, and is. we're going to come back uh, talking with David about his book, Penguinpedia. We're going to see some pictures from the book because he's a fabulous photographer, mm -hmm. and you will really enjoy seeing his pictures, and we have those ready to show you. And we'll talk about a little bit more about penguin behavior, penguin social life, and really why he got into studying penguins, because I think that's so yes. interesting. Yeah. I know we've all seen mm -hmm. the March of the Penguins movie was so popular, but then when somebody takes it to this level with the, the doing the book and the photograph and knows so much, it's just really interesting to study these, these creatures. So you stay tuned. We'll be right back with David Solomon on Ultimate Living.